What's up guys, Freddy with Poor Man Mods here. I just got done completely rebuilding the rear subframe of my IS-300. I did all strong flex bushings, control arm bushings, subframe bushings, differential bushings, upgraded the rear sway bar, and powder coated some things. In this video, I'm gonna show you step by step of everything that I did. In this video, I'm gonna show you step by step of literally everything, how to remove the subframe, how to remove all the bushings, install the bushings, everything you need to know to do all the bushings in your IS-300's rear subframe. And like I said, these are strong flex bushings, but I got them from Cube Speed. Now, Cube Speed is a big supporter of the channel, so do me a favor and go check out their stuff. I'll have a link in the description to them down below. They have an awesome shifter for the IS-300, and they are a dealer for strong flex, which is where all these bushings came from. So I'll have a link in the description down below to these bushings from Cube Speed. And if you don't want to see this whole like hour long video of this entire process, if you just wanted to see the control arm bushings or the diff bushings or the subframe bushings or even just the removal, I am going to try to break this up into multiple different videos. So if you don't want to sit through this whole thing, I completely understand. Keep an eye out for the other videos which will be shorter and a little bit easier to digest. But if you want to stick around for the whole thing, uh, I'd love for you to do that. So let's get started and get this thing out of the car and fully rebuilt. Hey, there we go. We're finished doing work in the wheel wells. Now we're going to remove the exhaust and then the drive shaft. But don't look at my exhaust too closely. It's not that good. The drive shaft is pretty easy. You don't have to remove it from the car. At least I don't think you do. Might have to. Um, We'll see, we'll get these 14 millimeter nuts and bolts off. All right, sweet, we don't have to drop the carrier bearing. Now you have an option. Uh, there's two ways I guess you could go about doing this. We have to disconnect the parking brake cable. You can either disconnect it from the little section up here where the two lines meet, or you could disconnect them from the drums here. I really don't like messing with drums, so I might disconnect it up here. I'm going to be disconnecting the parking brake from up here. There's a 10 millimeter bolt right there. Right there and one on the other side, holding the cable. And then you just slide, pretty hard to see, it's above the drive shaft. You just take the little cable out of its hoop. And uh, that's what I'm gonna try to do. I was finally able to get these parking brake cables down. The connection up there was very rusty and stuck, so I did drop the drive shaft to get access to it. Didn't need to remove the drive shaft if it wasn't so stuck. Here, is where it's about to get real messy. Gotta take this plastic cover off to remove this horribly rusted arm, uh, subframe connector, whatever. And then we can undo the subframe bolt right here. These <laughs> subframe connectors or whatever are so rusty, they uh, might need replaced. They're bad. And it is going to rain dirt. Rain dirt. Told ya. So those, there's two screws here. Those were tens. Let me pull this back. Two twelves. See if these will come out 
or break or what. Holy crap. That one broke. All right. Breaking is easy. You don't have to really fight it. You just gotta drill and tap the, the other part. All right. And that one broke too. The bolts on this car like to break because Toyota is kind of known for its rust. And this car does have a quarter million, more than a quarter million of rough, salty miles. That is bad. So, once you get that one off, do the same thing to the other side. But now there are two bolts holding the subframe to the body right here on this little bracket. There's one on each side of the car. You're gonna remove both these bolts. Another thing that you'll have to disconnect is the connector for your auto leveling headlights. I think that's what it is, um, that connector right there. I deleted this system a long time ago, so I don't need to disconnect it, but you will need to in order to drop the subframe without breaking anything. Okay, the subframe is out of the car. We cleaned it up, took it outside, sprayed it down with some super clean, and washed away a ton of grease, grime, and dirt, and a lot of paint and metal too. The subframe really isn't looking that good, along with some of the control arms. Um, but what I'm going to do now is start removing the subframe bushings. These are not that difficult to remove. There's a couple different ways you can go about doing it. And like I say in all my bushing removal videos, my preferred method is fire and always fire. Um, I just like fire and every time I get a chance to use it, I'll use it. So um, you could theoretically just bang these bushings out. They're not that difficult to remove. Um, we tried hammering them out just to see what would happen and it, they did not move at all for us. So we're gonna burn them out uh, because we like fire. And yeah, it's a pretty low effort method of removing bushings. Just torch the metal around the bushing and it should loosen it up and fall out with a couple taps of a hammer. So that's what we're gonna do. And there's four of them. Very, very low effort. Since I have the subframe in this position, I'm going to take advantage of the position and remove or begin to remove the differential. So I'm going to be removing these two bolts for the differential mounts and then all of the bolts for the axles because I'm basically going to completely disassemble this subframe. Okay, I think I'll just sell it.
Last thing I'm gonna do while we have the subframe in this position, get these two bolts out for the diff here, then we'll lay it down, get the bolts in the back, and then the differential should be out, significantly dropping the weight, and just make it easier to maneuver and get the other pieces off. Get on there. Pretty interesting looking. See if these can come out. This axle has been so stuck, both of them, I cannot get them off of the output shaft of the differential. This part of the axle is completely seized in here. As you can see, the cap of the axle where all the grease is and the elbow and stuff, that has come off. But I'm using this air chisel to hammer around this ring to loosen it up and I think I finally got it to move. Yeah, buddy. Oh my goodness. Finally figured out the issue with the axles. This end cap for the axle was stuck inside the output shaft on each side of the differential. So I had to pry this out with some picks. So I guess I will clean this up and try to put some more grease back into the axle and reassemble it. Uh, the axle shouldn't be bad at this point, um, but yeah, I'll get this off the other side and reassemble the axles. I removed all of the subframe bushings, have the differential and axes removed. Now I'm going to begin removing all of the control arms to do those bushings. So for this part, I'll remove one control arm at a time, obviously, but then when I get each arm off with the power of editing, I will show you how to remove and install the bushings for that respective arm, and then we'll move on to the next one. This is probably gonna be a common theme throughout the entire process. Very rusty. Wow, I can't even get the bolt back in. It's so rusty. Now that the bushing is burned out, we have access to get our saw blade in here, we're going to do a relief cut on this sleeve. You want to be careful, you want to be careful not to cut into the control arm, just enough to cut through the sleeve. But if you cut the arm a smidge, it's not that big of a deal. Just not ideal. So now we'll get our air chisel in there and uh, chisel it out. So this is the Sawzall that I've been using, uh, the Milwaukee Fuel M12. Big fan of this one. Um, I'll have a link for it if you want. And also the handy dandy air chisel. This thing is an absolute lifesaver, especially for the price. I'll link to both of these. So with the chisel, we're gonna try to get the chisel angled this way to keep it from spinning in the vise. We're going to get it into the sleeve, dig in, and then push out. This bolt right here is a camber adjustment bolt. There's a couple of these on the entire car. And in my experience with the Supra and this car, they tend to get seized inside the sleeve in here and you have to cut the bolts off. 
hopefully that's not the case because um, it's additional cost you know 20 30 bucks for each one so you definitely want to try to keep that cost down and there's a locking nut here so we have to remove this jam nut and then we can remove the actual camber nut and then hopefully the bolt can come out of the sleeve That's awesome. I think I messed up when removing this. Um, I probably shouldn't have tried to twist it. I think this cam key just kind of pulled off. So this bolt is twisted and I don't think it's reusable. So I'll have to buy a new one. That was my mistake. When you get that jam nut off, just try to pull these two apart. Don't twist it because you can see I'm uh, pretty sure I damaged this. For these toe arms, we'll burn out the bushings, even though it might not be necessary, and then we'll cut a relief cut in the sleeve and chisel out the sleeve. Wow, that is amazing. For the lower control arm, uh, when I torched the bolt to get this out, that was enough to basically melt the bushing and have it fall out. So the bushing is very simple to remove um, with a little bit of heat and torch. Uh, it literally just fell out for me, but now we have this sleeve. My one gripe with Strongflex is they don't have instructions, or at least they don't make them easy to find. With the bushing kit, uh, the bushings for this arm, according to their diagram, it comes with this sleeve here. I'm assuming we're replacing this sleeve. Now, the bushings that come with the kit look like they could easily go into this factory sleeve, but they do provide this. So I'm gonna bite the bullet and try to install this. Um, their manual says it goes here, but they don't tell you exactly what to do or how to do it. They just say that this sleeve and bushing are for here. So I'm gonna get my air hammer See if I can get this out and see if I can get this back in and hopefully that's the right thing. So before I do anything, I'll spray some penetrating lube on there to hopefully make it a little easier. And uh, it's flared on this end. Um, so I'm going to basically crush this tube in and then try to drive it out with my air hammer. I could not imagine doing this with the subframe in the car. I will be replacing this entire control arm. Uh, I just don't think it's worth saving. Okay, here is my quarter million mile IS300 rear upper control arm. I decided to replace it because it is just too far gone not worth you know putting anything new in here what i'm going to be replacing it with is this this is a gs 300 rear upper control arm it is cast aluminum rather than stamped steel so it's not going to rust the dimensions appear to be the same 
The bushings, I'm not sure if they're the same. Since I have the Strong Flex IS300 bushing kit, I don't know if the bushings will fit in here, but we're gonna find that out. I'm gonna burn and press these new bushings out, see if the IS300 ones fit. If they don't, I'll get GS300 ones. But I ordered these for an 03 GS300, but I believe 9705 will work. So I'll have a link in the description for these. These appear to be lighter, but I'm not sure. Um, I'll get a scale and see if there is a weight benefit or not. If there isn't a weight benefit, they're at least aluminum and they're not going to rust like this and they're cheaper. Um, I couldn't get these off Rock Auto and I think the OEM wants almost $300 a piece for these. And I got these off eBay for $140 for the pair. So 70 bucks for each of these arms. Um, and I didn't want to go aftermarket like tubular, you know, race stuff. Um, so I think this is a really good bang for your buck option. And now we're gonna get these new bushings out. So not doing anything fancy here, pretty much same thing like all the other arms, just torching the bushing out till it falls out on both sides. Then I'm going to air chisel out the sleeve. For this bushing here, uh, I started it off camera, but got the center burned out and it has this kind of flange on each side that flares out. And I basically started to just cut it off with my air chisel and it seems to be working pretty well. As you can see, I'm kind of damaging this aluminum around here. Aluminum is a lot softer than steel. You just want to be as careful as you can. Try not to damage it too much. Definitely try to be more careful than I did. I messed this one up pretty good on the inside. I'm gonna to have to file it to make it smoother uh, and around here. So be careful, aluminum is a lot softer. Uh, don't damage it as bad as I did. This one, the bolt was actually so stuck, it broke the bushing, it tore it. So all I have to do is get this sleeve out now. Got the subframe completely disassembled of all the control arms, got it cleaned up for the most part, and I'm ready to remove these two differential bushings. Um, the method that I'm gonna be using for this is my second favorite method other than fire, and that is an air chisel. Um, so what we're gonna do is basically just try to chisel in this sleeve, kind of collapse the sleeve of the bushing in, and then push it through. Shouldn't be too difficult. I'd imagine on the car this would be a nightmare, but with the subframe off, it should be pretty easy. Um, give it some persuasion with some penetrating lube. I really like the Seafoam Deepcrete. And uh, once I get these bushings out, I'm actually gonna send this subframe out to get sandblasted because I'm gonna powder coat it and try to make it look not as bad. So let's see if the air chisel method will work. pretty much collapse that side in. We'll just do that a bunch of times all around. You don't wanna collapse the steel of the subframe, just the sleeve of the bushing. Ha <laughs> ha! All right, just gotta do the same thing over here. stuff is pressurized. Look. <laughs> <laughs> More in my mouth. That's what she said. <laughs> Holy crap. All right, now we're out. All right, let's get these diff bushings out. I'm gonna torch around here and try to air hammer them out. Something's happening.
some people have luck with just straight hammering these bushings okay. out. There's an inner sleeve here, then the rubber bushing, and then the rest of that metal material. Some people have luck with hammering it straight out. I did not, so now that I have the rubber out, I'm gonna cut a relief cut in this inner sleeve and then try to hammer it out. Right now, I have all of the bushings out of the subframe. The subframe is almost ready to get sent out to get stripped. I just have these two brackets to take off, and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with them yet, because Figs Engineering makes an upgraded pair of brackets out of built aluminum, and I think I can make my own too. Uh, there's nothing really wrong with them. So I don't know, I'm just indecisive if I'm going to keep them the way they are or clean them up, make my own, or whatever, so still undecided about that. In this container here, I have some metal that I need to de-rust, and I've been using Evapo Rust and also Eastwood's Rust Remover as well. On this bucket of hardware, on most of them I removed all the rust. Um, this side was freshly out of the rust remover, this side was done a day ago and it's got some surface rust, but I'm going to try this Eastwood Fast Etch that converts rust to zinc should give it a nice zinc coating. So we'll see how that stuff looks. Um, so far the only bolt that I have to replace is one camber bolt which is really nice. So we'll see what this looks like when I get it zinc coated and see how that turns out. And see that thing when it gets back from being stripped. I got my subframe back from being sandblasted and zinc coated. It is looking better than I was expecting. Uh, it got rid of all the rust. There is still a lot of pitting, but it actually is in better condition than I was expecting. I've decided that I'm not going to reinforce this with any additional material like I did on my Supra's subframe, but what I am going to do is go over some of the welds, uh, some areas where the welds are just incomplete or just are really, really poor. So I'm gonna use my cheap flux core MIG welder for this, uh, just to give me some little bit, just to give me a little bit more peace of mind with this. And then once I finish adding some weld, I will powder coat it. We're going to install the rear trailing arm bushing in the knuckle. Before we put the bushing in, I'm just gonna Try to clean it up a little bit, wipe it down with some alcohol, try to get some of the crap out of here. And you want to feel it, make sure that it's free of any burrs or anything like that. If there are, you want to file them down. This feels pretty good, so we're going to get the bushing in. These kits come with plenty of grease, so do not be afraid to use a lot of grease. Um, each bushing pair comes with a whole pack, so pretty much you can use half the pack on each bushing. Uh, it comes with a good amount, and I have some leftover from the front control arm bushings of this car and from my subframe bushing kit for the Supra. So they do, they do give you a liberal amount. For these, we're only lubing up the inside of the bushing. We're not going to lube up, or we're going to try to not lube up the outside of the bushing. And put that all on the sleeve. The sleeve doesn't hold a lot of grease, but you want to grease it up as good as you can. And then, these just, these just pop right in. To get the sleeve in, you might be able to put it all the way in by hand, or at least most of the way. Right now, you don't need a press for this, we're just going to use one of these little plastic C-clamps. And this should do the trick. Perfection. Onto the toe arm bushing. These are very easy to install also. And just slide the bushing in. Got the control arm back from being stripped, uh, and before I powder coat this, we need to install the sleeve that we pressed out. The Strong Flex kit 
comes with all the bushings and the sleeve that you need for these control arms. And like I said earlier, the only complaint I have with Strong Flex is either they don't have instructions or they don't make it easy to find. Off camera, I installed this bushing sleeve in the other control arm and I'm gonna show you how I did it. First thing I did to guarantee that installation will be slightly easier, uh, it already has a little bit of a chamfer here on this smaller diameter part of the sleeve, but I'm going to take a file and increase that chamfer um, just to increase the chance that it will go in easier. After you put a little bit of a chamfer on this end here, the smaller outside diameter end, you want to find out which hole this is going to be going through on the arm. So as you can see, slides in pretty far on this side, but it doesn't do much on this side. So this hole is slightly larger in diameter. So this is going to be pressed in with the smaller outside diameter end going into the side with the larger inside diameter. And we're gonna have to press this all the way through. So it's gonna be coming in through this hole right here. And to make it slightly easier, we're gonna file this inside edge to have a little bit more of a chamfer to make it easier to accept the sleeve. Got the control arm in a vise, and here is a super handy dandy trick. Now to press this sleeve in, um, obviously if you... To press this sleeve in, obviously if you put this in the vise, you're just gonna pinch these two arms together, or if you put in a press, whatever, it's going to pinch them together. So we need to make a spacer. And I have an M10 bolt and nut here. And this is gonna be our spacer. The idea is that this nut and bolt are spreading these two pieces apart, preventing them from being pressed together. Uh, it worked on the other arm for me, so. Just for added security, I'm gonna put a tack weld on here just to keep it secure, and then I'm going to powder coat these arms. All right, these are looking really good powder coated in blue. Let's get the bushing in, should be very simple. All right, looking pretty good. Got the trailing arm powder coated in blue, looking really good. Let's get the bushing installed. That's done and looking good. Okay, so to try to do things the right way, I actually did order GS300 bushings from Strong Flex for these GS300 upper control arms. The bushings don't seem to be very different than the IS300 bushings, but since these are aftermarket control arms, there is an issue. Now, my friend Manny has his own channel, and he went over this bushing issue a little bit more in depth. Um, but basically, long story short, you can contact Strong Flex, and they will make you a bushing that is the correct fit for these aftermarket arms. These aftermarket arms, for whatever reason, are different than the OEM ones. Uh, the issue is, you can see there's a slight gap right here. When you put these two halves all the way in, there is a slight gap here because this piece is slightly thinner or more narrow than the OEM arm. Now, you can reach out to Strong Flex and get a custom bushing made, or you can poor man mod it, and that's what I'm gonna do because it's quicker, and I think it will work. So, what we have to do is get rid of this gap here. So what I did, I already did this on another arm, I shaved this bushing down just enough to eliminate this gap. But then you're probably thinking, well, what's that gonna do for out here? Well, you have to make up for it. You basically have to add material here. So what I did, I found this piece of plate steel. Um, the hole is off center because I just tried to utilize what I had. This is just what I had laying around and this gives it 
uh, the best coverage. Um, but you can certainly improve on this design if you want. Um, but the thickness of this steel is pretty much perfect for right here. So what I'm going to do is shave just one of these bushings down to get rid of this slack. And then when you put the sleeve in, there will be a little bit of the sleeve hanging over. And this will go on the outside, pretty much eliminating all the slop. So um, this shouldn't be an issue. Uh, I think it's going to work. But if you don't want to do this, you could either improve on my design or you can reach out to StrongFlex for a custom bushing. But this is what I'm going to do on each one. So you just need one of these shims and you just need to shave down one bushing to get rid of that gap. And I'm going to use my mini belt sander to do this. All right, with a little bit of shaving, Got it to fit perfectly flush, and they fit nice inside. There's not a big gap right here, hardly any gap at all. Um, so did a pretty good job shaving it down. We will lube up the inside and also lube up the sleeve and get the sleeve put in. Interesting that this grease is clear and not black. Not sure if that means anything or what. The differential bushings was also clear. Very interesting. All right, so we have a little bit sticking out over here, and that is where we will put our little shim. Perfect. And we'll get the other bushings installed up here in this sleeve. These bushings don't have any fitment issues. All right, looking good. All right, let's get these diff bushings installed. I'm going to use this wire wheel and just clean up these bores a little bit. They're pretty rusty. Here is everything you need for each bushing. I'm going to show you how this is getting assembled. So here is the bolt that goes up through here. This has a large taper on it. So the way this is going to get assembled when you install the diff to the subframe, there's two washers. One washer has a larger hole and one has a smaller hole. The larger hole is gonna go on this bolt, and then this PTO looking bush, bushing, is gonna go right here, and this will fit into the small hole on the bottom of the differential right here. And this piece is gonna be like so, and the washer with the smaller hole will rest on top. So this is basically how it's going to be when it's installed. And they give you two packets of crease for these two bushings. So now I'm gonna lube up this Peachio looking bushing and install it with this bevel facing up. Now that this bushing is pressed all the way in, we'll get the sleeve in. We'll move it up real good. So the sleeve is holding the bottom bushing in, uh, but since this isn't going to be installed into the subframe for a little bit, just to keep everything organized, I'm going to put a zip tie through here to hold both metal plates. And now we'll do the same thing to the other side. Got the subframe back from being powder coated. I uh, just went with a wacky color. We're being experimental with it. You're not really going to see it, so we tried to have a little fun with it. So now we're going to install the diff bushings that go here. They are side specific. Um, so this part number, 211966A, I think that's what it says. The 
the dual one is going to go on the left hand side of the subframe and 211867A, the single hold one, is going to go on the right. Very important that when you install this, that you want to get this vertical as close to straight up and down as you can. So let's lube it up and hope that we can get it in there. a tool. We have our tool. Uh, my brother made this a long time ago. It's just all thread with two metal spacers basically. And we're going to put this in from the back side, put the bushing in here, use this, tighten this down with a nut, and it should draw the bushing in. Oh, oh no, it's too small. Oh, damn it. This will actually work. Uh, this was one of the caps. Uh, I forget the correct term. This like was underneath a subframe bushing or something. Uh, so we can put that on this side. Oh, that's going to work perfect. Found this big ass piece of I don't know what. Removed this. Uh, I'm gonna see if having a larger surface area if that makes it easier to press in or if it's still gonna get crooked on me. Do not go in crooked. This thing really is being stubborn, but it may have gotten started. I kept wanting to slide in crooked. Ah, there we go. There we go. Perfect. Next you can install this piece. Okay, I'm thinking maybe that one was the harder one to install. Maybe this one will give us a break. Still giving me a little bit of trouble, but I think part of my trouble now is the big metal block that I'm using. It's a little bit too big and won't seat flush on the subframe, so not an ideal tool, but hopefully we can get it in just enough to where when I back it off, it's in there and I can punch it in. All right, looking good. The diff bushings are done. We're now ready to install the subframe bushings. Should be pretty easy, theoretically. Let's see if we can get them installed. This will take quite a bit of grease since it's a large bushing. There's a lot of perforation in there, so lather it up. Easy this part is. Just like that. We'll get the sleeve installed next, lube it all up. See if we can get it in with this rubber mallet. Perfect. This little Peachio fella is going to install just like this. This flat surface facing up, and these little feet, little peg guys, are going to be facing down. We'll lube this up and slide it right on the sleeve. All right, on to the rear bushing. This one is going to be even easier than the front one. Get a bunch of lube on there. These easily slide up from the bottom. Lube up the sleeve. Now it's very important that you install the sleeve in the right orientation 
you can see this has a larger inside diameter than this side. You want the larger inside diameter going up because there's a dowel in the body of the car that this goes up into for alignment. So we're gonna install it like this, up from the bottom. And look at that, slides right up. Take some of this grease, put it on the inside of this bushing. And now this time, these little pegs or feet, they're gonna be sticking up, just like that. And now, every bushing is finally installed on this car. All right, let's get these control arms installed. I did have to change the shim or spacer that I made for this modified bushing on the GS300 arm. The shim that I made was a little bit too narrow when I put the other arm in. There was just a lot more slop in here. So I made two more spacers out of some aluminum. I don't know the thickness, um, but when you go to do this, just install the arm and make sure that the shim isn't slopping around and just freely rotating and not doing anything. You don't want the shims to be thicker than the sleeve that goes in the bushing, but you want it to be close and so that it can be snug and not slide around. So let's get this installed. I will put grease on the outsides of the bushing. I was not kidding when I said I would anti-seize the crap out of these. And the shorter one is gonna go through here. And the nuts go on the outside. Bolts go in from the inside. There we go. Apparently, I had to repair the threads on the toe arm. All right, get all the hardware tightened up on all these arms, and then we'll move on to the sway bar. Oh yeah, upgraded to an Eibach unit. Strongflex did give me a set of their sway bar bushings, but unfortunately these are for the stock sway bar, not a thicker sway bar, so I will have to use iBox. I'm sure they're just as good, um, but kind of wish I could match, but whatever. To tighten these nuts on the sway bar end link, you need to loosen the stud with a five millimeter Allen key and tighten the nut. Otherwise, it'll just keep spinning. Wow, that was a lot more.
more successful than I was expecting. I should have lubed this part of the differential up before I put in the bushing. I'm gonna back the bolts out and spray it with some WD-40. Grease would probably be better, but I don't feel like completely starting over. Yeah, I think the sway bar is gonna to have to come out. sway bar back up and then do the front bushings. Let's get these axles installed now. Put some anti on here so they don't break and pull apart ever again. And now we'll get these little brackets put on. Get these exhaust hangers on and then I think it's ready to go into the car. <laughs> what a process this was. Uh, I think I'm approaching one month of this whole project. Um, been chipping away at it a couple hours at a time and I think it's finally ready to go back in the car. So let's get this behemoth underneath the car, lift it up, bolt it in. Okay, I got the four subframe bolts loosely in. I gotta tighten them. The longer bolt goes in the front with this little bracket, and the shorter one goes in the rear with this big washer thing. And now, I'm gonna tighten them. Before you really tighten down these front bushings, you gotta get the two bolts in the front of this black bracket first. So All right, we'll get this subframe tightened up. Get this bracket on and and basically just start uh, tightening everything up and reassembling it. The reverse process of what the reverse process of when you took it apart.
Okay, got the subframe in the car. Everything is tightened up. I didn't show everything with the buttoning up process. If you can get this far, I think you know how to tighten some bolts and install the parking brake cables. But now, the last piece to the puzzle to get this car back on the ground and on the road is to install the drive shaft. And I did away with the crappy, rusty, old, heavy two-piece drive shaft. And I reached out to Shaft Masters. And they didn't list one for the IS300. So I gave them all the dimensions that they needed and they made me this one piece aluminum shaft for the IS300. And this is 50% lighter than the factory drive shaft. So it's gonna make the car drive a whole lot better. And now that I have a lightweight flywheel, crank pulley, and this, the car should be, you know, really responsive. And I think it's gonna drive really well on the autocross track. So let's get this installed and get the car back on the ground. And yeah, I've been wanting to do this for so long. All right, finally, the car is back on the ground. The subframe project is complete and got the drive shaft in. Now, because we messed with the tow arm and the camber bolts, the car is gonna need an alignment. Uh, the tow and camber is likely going to be out. So I'm finished doing the work in this video, but the next thing I have to do is go get this thing aligned, um, which kind of sucks because six months ago when I did the front control arm bushings, I had it aligned but I knew it was going to be spaced out. So two alignments in one year, whatever. Um, so yeah, I know this was a very long video for you guys, but I'm glad that the few of you made it to the end. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I hope this helps out the IS300 community. And once again, I'll have links to everything down below, all the bushings that I got from CubeSpeed that are strong flex bushings. And I'll have a link to some of the tools that I use down below as well. So I think this video has gone on long enough. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, definitely hit like if you made it to the end. I'm assuming that you liked it. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.